Welcome to Electron Online. Based on questions from viewers, we decided to add one more Bernoulli equation example. In this particular example, we have fluid flowing through a pipe. Not only does the pipe gain height, but the pipe also becomes narrower, has a smaller cross section here than it has over here. Let's call this point one, and let's call this point two. The question in the problem is, what is the pressure at point two and also, what is the velocity at point two, knowing that the velocity at point one is four meters per second and that the pressure at point one is two atmospheres and that the cross-sectional area is 0 0.2 meters, uh, meters squared. Now, the density of the fluid, let's assume it's water, it can be taken to be 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. So how do we solve a problem like that? Well, we start with Bernoulli's equation that says that the pressure plus rho gh at point one plus one half rho v1 squared must equal the same quantities on the right side of the equation, the pressure at two, rho gh two plus one half rho v2 squared. H is the height of the pipe, v is the velocity of the fluid through the pipe. So we solve this equation for p2, since that's one of the things we're trying to find out. And when we do that, we move rho gh two to the other side, it becomes minus rho gh2, and we move the one half rho v2 squared to the other side, it becomes minus one half rho v2 squared, and we arrange everything in such a way that we have p2 on the left side of the equation. Now notice that in the initial equation, we do not know what pressure is at point two, and we do not know what the velocity is at point two, which means that pressure at point two is of course still an unknown, but on the right side, we have a second unknown, which is the velocity at point two. And then the question is, how can we solve this problem if there's two unknowns in the Bernoulli's equation? Well, the way we can find out the velocity at point two is to use a second equation. We know that the amount of fluid, the amount of volume of fluid per unit time has to be a constant. With other words, it doesn't matter if the pipe becomes smaller or wider, the velocity will adjust itself in such a way that the volume of the water, or, or better yet, the better way to explain it is that since the fluid cannot escape the pipe and you cannot add additional fluid to the pipe, the amount of fluid per unit time flowing through the pipe has to be the same anywhere along the pipe. We also know that the amount of fluid flowing through the pipe per unit time must be equal to the velocity times the cross-sectional area. And since that has to be equal to a constant, we can then say that the velocity at point one times the cross-sectional area at point one must equal the velocity at point two times the cross-sectional area at point two. And since we know the velocity at point one, and we know the cross-sectional areas at both places, we can solve this for V2. So V2 becomes equal to V1 times the ratio of A1 divided by A2. Since V1 is equal to four meters per second, and then we put in the ratios of A1 to A2, so A1 here is 0 0.2, A2 is 0 0.1, we can leave out the units because they cancel anyway, so you can see that the velocity of point two must be eight meters per second. So now that we know that, we also know the velocity at point two. Another area or another item that can be confusing is, well, they didn't tell us what the height is of point one, they just gave us the height of point two. Well, the height of point two is relative to the height of point one, which means only the difference in height matters, not the actual height at both points. So that's why I wrote it like this. You can see that the only thing that matters is the difference between the two heights which means that if h1 was 5, then h2 would be 5 more or equal to 10. If h1 was 10, then h2 would be 15 and so forth. The difference is what matters. In this case, the difference is 5. Now notice what happens because we have the signs to contend with. Notice that the pressure at 2 will be equal to the pressure at 1 plus this term right here. We'll take each term at a time. So here we can see that since H1 can be considered to be zero, so just call that zero, and H2 is five meters higher, this becomes minus five, so this becomes a negative term, which means that as you go up higher in the pipe, the pressure drops. So only considering the difference in height, 
the pressure here would be less than the pressure there because it's higher in the pipe. And the difference in pressure is indeed rho GH, which is equal to the pressure in a static fluid according to the depth. The second term and the third term have to do with velocity. Notice that, again, it involves the difference in velocity, but not to the first power, to the second power. So take a look at the second term right here, or in essence, it's now the third term on the right side of the equation. Notice that has to do with the velocity at point 1. So the pressure at point 2 will be greater or smaller depending upon the velocity. Now take a look. We're going to put in some numbers because I think that makes a little bit more sense when we do. So let's plug in the numbers and then see what these terms are equal to in terms of a numerical quantity. So pressure at 1 was considered to be 2 atmospheres. So that would be equal to 2 times 101,000 300 pascal. So that's equal, that's one atmosphere in terms of newtons per square meters or pascals. Then we have plus, or actually let, let me put the minus in there, minus the density, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, the acceleration due to gravity, and the difference in height, that would be 5, and we place the minus in front. Here we get plus, I'm actually running out of room, I'm not, well, we'll figure that out here. So plus one half times the density times the velocity one squared so v1 is four we square that we get four squared and then we subtract from that minus one half times the density times v2 squared that would be eight squared notice that this term here is positive and this term here will be negative what that means is, if the velocity increases as we go down the pipe, if V2 is bigger than V1, and this is a negative quantity, this is a positive quantity, that means the pressure will drop as, we go to, as the velocity increases. And that's what we find in a fluid. As the velocity increases, the pressure indeed does drop. If the pipe had gone the other direction, then we would have had, well, I'm sorry, let's cut that out. Now, if the pipe had become wider instead of narrower, then we would have a larger cross-sectional area, we would have a smaller velocity, and then the negative term would be smaller than the positive term. In other words, that if the pipe became wider and the velocity dropped, then the pressure would go up. So in a fluid, if the velocity decreases, pressure goes up. If the velocity increases, pressure goes down. So now we can go ahead and plug in the numbers and see what we end up with. So this would be equal to, and of course all these are in terms of pascals, 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 and so this would be 202,600 pascals for pressure 0.1 minus, so here we have, that's 9,800 times minus 49,000 pascals, this would be 16 divided by 2, that would be plus 8,000 Pascals, and that would be minus 64, oh, no, not 64, it's 64 divided by 2, or 32,000 pascals. So notice the velocity doubled, which means the term involving the change in pressure due to velocity, this is four times as large as this in absolute value, because the velocity is twice as much. Okay, now we can add all this up, and let's see what we get. We get 202,600 minus 49,000 plus 8,000 and minus 32,000 equals. And that gives us 129,600 pascals, which is the pressure at point two. Why is it lower than at point one? Because at point one it would be twice that, so this is the pressure at point one, 202,600. This is the pressure at point two for two reasons. For one, the pressure decreased because it gained elevation, so the pressure drops. And secondly, the velocity increased, which is another reason why the pressure dropped. So the pressure dropped due to the velocity would be 32 minus 8, or 24,000 pascal drop because of the increase in velocity, and a 49,000 pascal drop because of the increase in height. So subtract 24,000 and subtract 49,000 from 202,600, and that will now be the new pressure at point two. And that's how it's done.